I'm Bruce Ewing and welcome to the Solar Heat Exchange Manufacturing Demonstration Video. Today we're going to show you how simple and easy it is to install the simple drain back system solar hot water heater. Let's get started. The first step in installing the Solar Heat Exchange Simple Drain Back System is the placement of the solar panels. Planning for both their location and ease of access is essential. As a drain back system, the supply and return lines as well as the collectors themselves must have direct free flowing drainage. There can be no traps or places where water won't drain back from the collectors to the heat exchange tank. The solar panels are carried onto the roof by two individuals and then placed in an area where they will receive direct sunlight for the majority of the time throughout the year. Optimum orientation is within 15 degrees either side of south, and optimum tilt is within 10 degrees either side of latitude. The mounting brackets are secured with bolts either through roof rafters or through the sheathing and a 2-inch nailer secured to two roof rafters. High quality sealant is placed between the roof penetration and the bracket before bolting the bracket down. After bolting, it's good policy to again seal the bolt. An easy way to get ideal placement is to locate the bottom brackets, then use the collectors in place to locate the exact location of the upper brackets. Note, it's critical that the collectors are not level on the roof. Leave at least a quarter inch per foot of drainage on the collector heads. One easy way to be sure you have drainage is to locate the lower brackets one half a bubble from plumb, then mount the collectors. Panels are linked together by soldering the connecting pipe to allow water to travel through both panels. Allow at least 4 inches between panels for this connection. After locating the panels, two additional penetrations are made in the roof to allow water to travel up to and away from the collectors. Generally, a 2 inch hole saw will be sufficient for this purpose. Note: The supply feed will be located on the opposite side from the return feed. For ease of connection, the supply and return penetration should be approximately 6 inches from the supply and return ports. The return port at the collector is the preferred connect point for the upper temperature sensor. Simply fasten the temperature sensor to the copper outlet before covering with insulation. As water leaving the collector can exceed 200 degrees, it is good policy to not run the sensor wire against the copper pipe leaving the collectors. Piping running from the collectors to the heat exchanges must be constructed such that drainage can flow unimpeded. Where PEX pipe is used, the first 5 feet of return from the collector should be copper due to high temperatures. Note: When soldering, be sure to use care to avoid fire danger, as demonstrated in the video. Piping should be insulated for its entire run. The simple drain back system has been designed so insulation is as easy as possible. Connection sites for both hot and cold water are clearly labeled to aid in proper connection. A good place to start is filling the heat exchanger before making connections to the collectors. This is done by simply filling the tank with tap water until full. It's not a bad policy to have an overflow hose in place to catch water after the tank is full. After filling the tank, drain back 2 to 2.5 gallons of water using the cleanout valve at the bottom of the tank. With the tank filled, you're ready to connect the cold in and hot out potable water connections. Next, the pump, ball valve, and flow meter assembly is connected. The supplied gaskets can be installed in any orientation. Be sure to not lose track of the small O-ring gaskets in the flow meter. With the pump and flow meter assembly connected, you're ready to complete the connections to and from the collectors. The controller is pre-mounted on the side of the simple drain back system, ready to be plugged into a regular household outlet. The pump assembly's electrical wire is ready to be plugged into the controller plug assembly. In addition to plugging in the controller and pump, you must wire the sensor running from the solar collector to the controller. This is as simple as exposing the controller wire lugs and connecting the two sensor wires to the two wire receptors at the left side of the controller. When the controller is powered up, it should automatically turn itself on. Factory settings are suitable for most homes and conditions. Should you wish to alter the settings, please consult the controller manual for directions on overriding the password protected settings. The controller will monitor temperatures at the solar collectors and the heat exchanger and automatically tell the pump when to move water to the solar collectors 
or when to allow the system to drain back and remain idle. The flow meter allows calibration of the flow from the pump to the collector. Simply turn the ball valve between the pump and flow meter to restrict flow to approximately 2 gallons per minute. The simple drain back system can easily be installed by a two-man crew in under 8 hours. The simple drain back system. Easy and efficient. Good for the environment and your wallet.